be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Many of you probably know this story. You've heard it quite a few times, probably. And you think you know it rather well. Do we actually know the story, though? Do we actually understand it? Do we actually see what's happening and what's going on? Or do we hear what we want to hear? In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. It was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. There's no other place in all of history that says that a census took place at this time. This is the only place where this happens. And the reason these two rulers are listed here is two reasons. One is for dating. So we know when this event was to take place. And the other is to show the difference in power. As I read over this scripture every year, I wonder, how can we make this story new? How can I preach to you good news on a story we think we all know? How can I? person that has to cover himself with a white robe so you see Jesus and not me, tell you, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people, for to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah. You see, this story has so many things to it that we don't really get, and we don't really see, and we think we know it, but we don't. Because God breaks in, and God comes to us in ways that we don't expect Him to, at times that we may not want Him to, in ways that we wish wouldn't happen. But God always shows up. You see, this story tonight is about a Savior who comes. This story tonight is about good news. And what is that good news tonight? What is, I just said it. What is that good news tonight? It's a Savior. It's this little baby. Right? Jesus was born to Mary, a woman who gave, who got pregnant out of wedlock, to a man who she was betrothed to, who didn't divorce her, or even though he wanted to. God has a way of doing things in a way that we don't expect Him to. God has a way of doing things in a way that we don't want Him to. God has a way of breaking in and being in places that we sometimes wonder why He's there. You see, just as the angels opened up the sky and sang to the shepherds, of good news, of great joy for all the people, right? Good news. I said the good news of tonight is this baby born in this manger. And it was a silent night, right? We'll sing that here in a little bit. right? All of the animals were quiet. And everything was calm. Kind of like right now. How many of you have ever been in a barn? Is it quiet in a barn? Even if the animals aren't making any noise? There's still noise in a barn. It's noisy. So it wasn't a silent night. It wasn't this pretty picture that we have in our minds of, of this scene where there's a woman who just gave birth and she's gaga over her child. You know, I've never given birth, but I was there three times. And Exactly. I'm, I see mothers in the, in the, in the, in the, in the out there going, looking at me like, you, you get it, right? It's not, it wouldn't look like this. And we think that the, 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 the shepherds were right there and their sheep were right outside this building and the star came down and the angel stood on top of the manger and he, and he said, I got this news and the, the shepherds just went inside. Did you listen as I read it t- tonight? It said... The shepherds heard this, and when the heavenly host left them, they looked at each other and they said, Let us now go to Bethlehem. Where were they? They were probably out on the hillside. 
Bethlehem's not a big town, but they were just outside the city because what did they have? They're shepherds, so they had sheep. You probably wouldn't have your sheep in town. So they were out of town. They came into town and they found Mary and Joseph and they went in and they told Mary and Joseph everything that had happened, everything that the angel said to them. They told them about the angel coming and telling them not to be afraid and that they were bringing them good news of great joy for everyone because a Savior was born in Bethlehem. And this is how you're going to find him. And they went and they found him. And they told Mary and Joseph and whoever else was there everything. And what happened? And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Now there's at least two people there that should have been prepared and known this already, right? Because they've been working up to this for nine months now. right? Mary knew because Gabriel came to her and said, You're going to have a child and it's going to be a boy. And you need the name of Jesus. And he's going to be the offspring of God. And the same thing to Joseph. But when the shepherds come in, Mary and Joseph are amazed at what the shepherds told them. We think that they had it all together and they knew what they were doing. They were just like any other parents. They had no idea what was going to happen. And do you know what the really good news about that comes tonight is beyond the fact that God became flesh and came here to dwell, to, to dwell among us. The great joyful news for tonight is that even in the midst of life, even in the midst of chaos, even when you don't think that you're good enough to have God come to you, you are. Because Mary and Joseph didn't get it either. So I can stand here as a man covered in white, hidden by Jesus, knowing that I'm no better than any of you. And can say to you, tonight I bring you a message of good news, of great joy for all the people. For unto us this day is born in the city of David a Savior, and he is Christ our Lord. And that word good news, meaning something that happens that is better than anything that could happen, meaning Jesus came and was born in a manger, meaning that Mary and Joseph might not get the whole story, but they're still able to grasp and take that message out. The word good news itself is something that you can be and are. The word good news is euangelion. The the first part of that, the U, is, means good. And the second part is, comes from the word angelos. And what does the word angelos mean? What does it sound like? Angel. angel. Right? Angel. And what is an angel? A winged creature? Messenger. What? Messenger. A messenger. All an angel is is a messenger. It's someone who takes a message to somebody else. And the, and the word here for good news is good messenger. And this word for good news is used by Luke not because it's just what it is, right? Not the simple fact that Jesus was born and that's the best news that any of us could ever hope for. The word here, good news, was a political word used by the Romans and by, by kingships to announce the, the birth of a new son. When the emperor had a son, they would announce it, and it was euangelion, it was good news, because your next emperor was just born. Your next king was just born. Your king was just born. And that is the best news that any of us could ever hope for. So when you think... In this world that swirls around you and you walk through darkness and you can't seem to see the light. Remember that Christ came to be born as one of us. To walk this world as one of us. To show us how to live. So that even when we don't get it right, we can remember that he's always there. Even when we get things wrong, we can remember that he came to be one of us. To bring us his love. To show us his ways. God became flesh and dwelt among us. And lives with us in our place. So remember that this night. This most holy of nights. When God stepped out of heaven and into our world. To become born a baby in a manger. To take us to the cross. 
to show us of the relationship that we can have with God. And remember that you are a messenger for His good news, to take that everywhere you go, to tell everyone you know how much God loves them and show them what it means to see a baby born in a manger and tell it everywhere you go.